Welcome to Rockland Thunder Physics. This is a video about how to solve static and dynamic equilibrium problems. We want to thank our friends at Pasco Scientific, Jane Jackson, WebAssign.net, Dr. Peggy Bertrand, Gardner Friedlander, and Martin Kirby for their help. Rockland High School, where 91% pass AP Physics. Just as a review, these are some of the forces that you should already know. The force due to gravity, the normal force, the force of tension, the applied force, the static frictional force, the kinetic frictional force, and drag force. Well, working with um, second law problems, our first step is always draw a force diagram and a motion map. If necessary, draw a component diagram, and if necessary, rotate it. Explicitly write out Newton's second law, the sum of the forces equals ma. Write the second law equations in the horizontal and vertical direction. And finally, substitute the numeric values where appropriate and solve for unknowns. Static equilibrium problems are problems in which, um, well, first of all, an equilibrium problem is one in which the sum of the forces on the object add up to zero. In one dimension, we would simply write it as the sum of the forces equals zero. And in two dimensions, we would write it as the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero and the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. That simply means if you add up all the forces, you're going to get a zero. An object, in the st an object is in static equilibrium if the velocity is also zero. That's a very special case. Okay, let's look at this example. It says we've got this block and it's resting on this incline. This is a static equilibrium problem where the block is not moving. We want to find the weight of the block, find the force that the surface applies to the block, and find the force of friction. The first step, as you know, is to draw the force diagram. So that's what I'd like to do first. So step number one, I'm going to write a number one here, and we're going to draw our force diagram. We always got the force due to gravity. That's going to be straight down. In this case, we're going to draw the normal force. And remember, the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. So it's the surface pushing up and to the right. And I'm going to label that with a normal force. The static frictional force must be pointed in that direction because if there was no friction, this object would obviously slide down. So this is a static frictional force. It's always parallel to the surface and going opposite the intended motion there. Um, also, what we'd like to draw is a motion map. In this case, the motion map is really simple. There's no velocity, so I'm just going to represent that with a dot. There's no acceleration, so I'm going to represent with that with a dot. So therefore, our velocity equals zero, and our acceleration equals zero. The second step is to draw a force diagram with components, and to rotate it if necessary. In this case, we do have to rotate it. It'll make life easier for us, because instead of two forces off axis, as we have in our force diagram, we'd only have one. And let's look at why. Let's rotate the normal force so that it's straight up. So there's our normal force. My static frictional force will then point directly to the left. My gravitational force will turn and point this way. So there's my static frictional force, and there's my force due to gravity. Now, I've only got two forces that, I'm sorry, I only have one force that's off axis now, whereas before I had two. So as we can see, this rotated force diagram is a somewhat easier scenario to solve. Let's draw in our components. The, let's look for the one force, or the forces I should say, that are not on the x or y axis. And that's a force due to gravity. So let's draw in its components. So I'm going to draw FGY going down this way. So that's FGY. And this is going to be FGX. And what we learned before is that this angle is always this angle right here. The angle between FG and FGY is always the incline angle. So there's our force diagram. There's our force diagram with components. Step three is to always explicitly write out Newton's second law. There it is. Just write it out. Step four is to write out Newton's laws in the horizontal and vertical directions. 
So step four, I'm going to write out Newton's second law in the horizontal. And I'm going to write out Newton's second law in the vertical. Now, in the horizontal, this means that I have to add up all the forces in the horizontal, um, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my component diagram, and I'm going to look at all the forces that are pointed uh, horizontally. That means either left or right. I only see two. That's FGX and FS, the static frictional force, and the force due to gravity in the horizontal direction. So I'm going to write an equation for them. I'm going to write out FGX plus Fs, and according to Newton's second law, that should equal Max. But remember that we had no acceleration in any direction according to our motion map here. So since there's no acceleration, this is going to also equal zero. Let's look at our equation in the y direction. In the y direction, we've got Fn and Fgy as our only uh, vectors pointing vertically. So in this case, I've got Fn plus Fgy also equaling Mayy and also because there's no acceleration in either the vertical or the horizontal, that's also going to equal zero. So there, I've done my first four steps. Step five is to calculate out all the things that we know. So we know, for example, certain things like the force due to gravity. That's something that can be solved. So let's go over here and let's go to step five. I know that the force due to gravity is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, times the mass. So that's the equation for it. Let's put in the actual values, the force due to gravity, is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared and I multiply that in this case times a mass of 30 kilograms. Always make sure they you know whether they're giving you the mass or the weight. In this case because it's in kilograms they've given us the mass. So I'm going to solve that. I'm going to put that in my calculator and my calculator says that comes out to negative 294 newtons. Well, now that I know that this force due to gravity is negative 294 newtons, I can find these other two sides of this right triangle using SOCOT TOA. So, um, FGY, let's solve for FGY first. Actually, let's solve for FGX first, okay? This horizontal component. FGX is opposite the angle, and since I have the hypotenuse, I'm going to use CA in SOCOT TOA. So the cosine, no, um, check that. I'm actually going to use sine, okay, because it is opposite that angle. In SOHCAHTOA, I'm going to use SOH, which means the sine of the angle, 37 degrees, is equal to the opposite side, FGX, over FG. But we know FG is 294 newtons. I'm going to leave the negative sign out because in my new coordinate system where I have changed and rotated it to the right is actually positive. So I'm going to leave out this negative sign and I'm going to solve for FGX. So FGX, I'm going to cross multiply here and I'm going to find that that's 294 newtons times the sine of 37 degrees. I'm going to plug that in my calculator, making sure that my calculator is in degree mode. And I'm going to find that that equals a value of 177 newtons. I'm going to leave this as being positive because notice my FGX points to the right. Let's now solve for FGY. Since FGY is adjacent this angle, I'm going to use the ka of SOHCAHTOA and I'm going to write out the cosine of 37 degrees is equal to FGY over, once again, the hypotenuse, which is FG, 294 newtons. 
So to make sure you understand, this is 294 newtons, is this side here. This hypotenuse, this longest side of my right triangle. So when I solve that for FGY, I'm going to get 294 newtons times the cosine of 37 degrees. And that's going to come out equaling 235 newtons. So now that I've got FGX and FGY, I can plug them back into my equation over here. In this equation, I've got FGX, so I'm going to plug in 174, 177 newtons into my horizontal equation here. So I'm going to have 177 newtons plus Fs equaling zero. So that means my static frictional force should equal negative 177. Let's double check that. Is it pointing to the left? And indeed it is. So my static frictional force is 177 newtons to the left in this orientation here. In other words, upward, up the ramp. Now let's solve for my y equation. In my y equation, I'm looking for the normal force. I don't know that. But I do know that FGY is pointed downward, it's 235 newtons. And it's, since it's pointing downward, it must have a negative value. So I'm actually going to plug in a negative 235 newtons. Again, it's negative because it's pointing downward. And this is also is going to equal zero. So my normal force equals a positive 235 newtons. Let's double check that. Is it indeed pointing upward because this is positive? My no normal force is indeed pointing upward, so that must be correct. At least the direction must be correct. Okay. Um, going back, let's, let's double check to see if we've answered everything. We found the force of friction. We found the force that the surface applies to the block, which is also called the normal force. Um, yes, we have found the weight as well. The weight was here. The force due to gravity is the weight, negative, negative. Um, 294 newtons.